you want to learn how to take care of a whale wolf, not a werewolf, a whale wolf, well, then this is the video for you. Welcome to Commander Breakdown. But yes, welcome to Commander Breakdown. Hope you're excited to talk about a whale wolf and a human warrior today. I, I'm i digging, I'm loving all of these new creature types that are coming out in the new set. But before we jump into the video, let's give a quick shout out to our sponsor, uh, TCG Player. If you go to bit.ly slash joltmtg, um, that will apply my affiliate coupon code. And that way you can get yourself some cards and help support the channel um, at the same time. So if you do that, hey, much obliged. Let's go and cover our partner commanders, and that is going to be Yukima. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. If I'm wrong, I do apologize, but that's how it's going to be for the rest of the video. So uh, we have Yukima. It's going to be three total mana, uh, partner with Sazur. Uh, Yukima can't be blocked. Then whenever Yukima enters the battlefield, excuse me, leaves the battlefield, it deals X damage to target player, and you gain X life, where X is its power. Let's go over to Sazur. Um, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one counter on that creature. Now, as far as these two being a partner commander, as far as the leeway as creativity, um, you're in Sultai, you have partners in Sultai, so you're going to be completely wide open for whatever sort of deck that you want to build. Um, you will get rewarded for running some sort of Voltron package because if you can get Yukima a little bit bigger, um, that's going to be a nicer leave the battlefield trigger. Um, that's... The thing with Sultai is that it has a lot of answers for a lot of different things. You're going to have a lot of your Abrupt Decay, your um, Assassin's Trophy style removal. The thing where Sultai really kind of lacks sometimes is that they just don't have a solid finisher sometimes. And so I, I just want to say that if you've never built a Sultai deck before, don't worry about winning. Don't worry about your win percentage. Um, there will be some times where if you build a competitive version of this, yes, you do want to care about your win percentage. But if you're just building something to play with your friends or play at your local gaming store, understand that one of the good things about soul tie is really just the experience of playing the deck so um, definitely keep that in mind in your deck building if you're just like man I, you just lack this punch I, I can't close games out hey that's soul tie soul tie unfortunately um, it just does it has a lot of answers for things it just doesn't have that punch that a lot of the other colors uh, that can accompany like a black and a blue color set with that but other than that i love soul ties my favorite color shard to play super excited to play these the way this deck tech is going to be set up is we're going to be talking about kind of the support packages for the actual partner at the first part of the video then the second part of the video is going to be more of kind of our mid-range options or just kind of creature packages that you can run in the actual deck itself so if you already know where you're kind of taking Yukima, you can check out the first part. But if you want to keep yourself open, um, the latter part of the video is definitely going to be where we talk about the different creature packages that you can run in addition to your partners to really kind of help uh, go for those win conditions because you need to get some sort of win condition. Um, talking about Voltron, that's going to be Black Blade Reforged, Grafted War Gear, Hero's Blade. These are all awesome pieces of equipment that you can get down very early, have a very low equip cost, and get it onto Yukima. Um, one of the good things about Grafted War Gear is you're going to get that nice plus three plus two then you can equip it for zero when it becomes unequipped you're gonna have to sacrifice that creature so it's almost kind of like a pseudo sack effect or sack outlet that's going to be great for a deck like this to where if you need to sacrifice it for some reason to get that leave the battlefield trigger i'm um, just having that built into one of your pieces of equipment is really going to help you out um, black blade reforge and hero's blade these are great options that you can get down on turn one or turn two well not turn one unless you have an explosive start but you're looking to get these down on turn two and they're going to slot perfectly and then once you get Yukima down to stick it on there and start swinging in. Um Outside of that, Grafted Exoskeleton, um, like I did mention, Sultai needs a way to win, so running some sort of Infect, um, I'm not a huge fan of Infect and Commander, but there's just certain times where you need to close, to close games out and you need to beat people. Uh, mm -hmm. Grafted Exoskeleton is going to be a great way that you can really get that nice power and toughness bonus and still kind of attack your opponent's life total with Infect. And then Uwazama's Jitte, this is at home in a deck like this. You can stick this on Yukima, start swinging in, get those charge counters, you can plump it up in response to some sort of removal effect you can use those charge counters to remove creatures off your opponent's side of the battlefield um, if you're not going to run a ton of Voltron in here I would definitely run Black Blade, Grafted, Hero's Blade, and Uwazama's Jitte if you have access to Jitte uh, simply because these are going to be so good in a deck like this and of course running your swords of blank and blank um, whatever you've got toss them in there Sword of Feast and Famine is going to be an all-star in this deck it's going to dodge a lot of spot removal from your opponents um, Fire and Ice is going to give you some good card advantage and then Sword of Truth and justice actually does give you that nice kind of proliferate with your plus one counters which does work out with your actual partnered abilities um also just some stuff with like mask of memory and rogues gloves just have
having these different equipment that give you extra value other than a power and toughness bonus you know there's a lot of times to where you know pj's done this uh, commander replay he gets mask of memory on a creature and just goes to town and starts drawing a ton of cards there's going to be a lot of times where you don't have sword of beast and famine or it was i was jitte and you have mask of memory since you keep is unblockable you can just stick it on there and just start drawing a ton of cards you just want to get some sort of value flowing or some sort of life loss against your opponent flowing whatever that may be but definitely incorporate some 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 version of mask of memory or rogues glove in your deck now if you do want to take this into some sort of kind of enchantress aura package um there's a lot of really good auras that work out with our particular commander curiosity keen sense a uh, curious obsession uh, you're going to be able to stick these onto your creature on uh, yukima low cost low investment and just start swinging in you're pretty much always going to have these active and just cashing in a card draw turn after turn each combat step is really going to help you um, kind of push yourself into the late game also stuff like hydra's growth and vampiric link um, you're just going to keep yourself open you can go super heavy with these auras but um, you're probably going to draw a lot of heat having you chemo on the table so you don't want to go super crazy but just having these low investment auras are really going to help you generate card advantage you know outside of just getting card advantage on combat you stuff like sigil of sleep and one with nature um, you stick these on yukima start swinging in you know it's going to deal combat damage because it's unblockable and then you're going to be able to get lands on the battlefield or start tapping down some of your opponent's creatures whatever that may be you just want to basically create this nuisance for your opponent whether it's card advantage for you or you're messing with their board state or getting ahead on lands um, whatever that may be now one of the other ways that you can really kind of take your deck to the next level is going to be combat tricks we've got become immense hatred biomass mutation um, being able to make Yukima very big very quickly at instant speed is going to be something that you definitely want to do. I love Hatred. Hatred, that's going to be your opponent when you go for Hatred. Uh, pay X life, it gets plus X until end of turn. Then let's say you have some sort of sack outlet, whatever that may be. You definitely want to run some sort of uh, combat tricks in here. Also Berserk and then Swipe. Um, target creature gets plus two. You're going to get that rebound, which is really going to help kind of propel that power and toughness bonus. And then also, like I mentioned, running Infect in here is going to give you that win condition. Um, something to kind of fall back on. Uh, Triumph of the Hordes, especially if you're kind of going wide with a bunch of creatures, that's really going to help you get that infect damage and then tainted strike you know let's say we've got a lot of voltron pieces on yukima then we just go for a quick little tainted strike i run this in yargle which works out perfectly in yargle because it's a nine three i'm pretty sure it's a nine three but uh but yeah just running tainted strike you want to run these options that kind of catch your opponent off guard or they're like oh yes of course i didn't play around tainted strike so that's something you do you do want to keep in mind and running some sort of pump spell that does protect yukima too that's going to be vines of vastwood blossoming defense you basically want to be aggressive still with yukima at the same time being able to protect it so it's important to run some sort of diversified amount of protection spells now outside of those you've got dive down veil of summer mizium skin uh, mizium skin is great in a deck like this especially if you have a lot of creatures um, you're looking at just two mana to give all of your creatures hex proof so if your creatures are trying to if your opponents are trying to deal with any of your creatures museum skin is a great way to protect the entire board and also stuff like simic charm and heroic intervention um you're going to be heavily invested in your board state so having some sort of protect everything in you know, permanents you control gain hexproof or heroic intervention, everything gains indestructible until end of turn. Whether you're going wide with creatures, you're going wide with Voltron, you're going wide with uh, kind of auras, whatever that may be, you want to be able to protect your board state and heroic intervention is definitely going to help you do that. And also Simic Charm, you know, it's just going to be great in a deck like this. You have that plus three, plus three as a modal effect. You can do the hexproof or you can just bounce something back to their hand. So that's going to really keep you open and flexible as far as whatever you want to do. And of course, some of the mono black pump spells the combat tricks i love these um, supernatural stamina this is a great way to kind of pump up the creature you know if something's going to happen to it it's going to come back onto the battlefield so that way you've already kind of cheated that commander tax um, same thing with undying evil and rush of vitality um, this is going to make sure that your creature stays on the battlefield and becomes a problem for your opponent as you keep building up more and more resources so you don't want to run all of these in there but you just at least want to run you know undying evil and supernatural stamina um, that is going to be very good highly recommend these i run these in ganti um just being able to cheat a commander tax at instant speed because really what these equate to is let's say we have yukima on the battlefield your opponent goes for something like um 
destroy target creature. In response, you go Undying Evil. It's just one mana counter, bring your creature back onto the battlefield. And then Undying Evil, you get an extra counter, which is uh, pretty nice. Now, another thing that you do want to incorporate into your deck building is going to be some sort of sacrifice element for Yukima. Let's say we've got it really big. We've chipped away at a couple different people. We've got them out of the game. You want to be able to cash in a ton of card draw and at the same time deal some damage to your opponent. Um, Life's Legacy, Greater Good, Momentous Fall, these are all going to be great ways that you can sacrifice Yukima, get that trigger on the stack, and cash in card draw and kind of rebound from there. Um, you do want to kind of incorporate or at least diversify your sack outlet. Something like Abjure is actually really good in a deck like this. Uh, sacrifice a blue permanent counter target spell. So let's say that they're going for removal anyway. You can use Abjure to kind of counter that spell, cash in card draw, and then kind of go from there. Or even something like Blasting Station. Sacrifice a creature, deals one damage, and then when a creature comes in play, untap it. Um, Blasting Station may not be the best option for the deck, but just having some sort of sack outlet, whether it's Frexian Altar or the Ashnod's Altar, just something that you can instant speed sacrifice Yukima and then get some sort of value from it, whatever that may be. So um, another cool thing that you can run in there, you know, talking about sacrificing Yukima, that's going to be some sort of mono black damage spell. I love these. Uh, Dying Wish, whenever Enchanted Creature dies, target player loses X life and you gain X life. Um, same thing with Rite of Consumption. It deals damage equal to the Sacrifice Creature's power to target player. You gain life. And then same thing with Essence Harvest. Now you do. These have to go to the graveyard. The only difference is Rite of Consumption, but with Dying Wish and Essence Harvest, it does have to go to the graveyard for that death trigger to happen. If Yukima goes back to the command zone, um, it technically never died. It just went back to another zone. So you're not going to get those triggers. But with Rite of Consumption, uh, sacrifice a creature it's going to deal damage equal to that sac to a player equal to the sacrifice creature's power so that will send you Kima back to the command zone but if you need to use something like dying wish or essence harvest as a kind of like a late game finisher you can certainly do that you just need to have you Kima go to the graveyard and uh, because if you don't you're going to be a sad magic player and of course if we're talking about using these black spells toss in a wall of blood um, pay one life gets plus one plus one um, you can use this as a one shot you know let's say you've gained some life you're okay on life total you can pay a lot of life make that wall of blood really big and then use one of these spells to close it out there's no better feeling than uh, getting wall of blood and knowing that you have essence harvest in the hand and you just start paying a lot of life total get it really big and you're just kind of like uh, is this good <laughs> i'm gonna go for it somebody countered it one time against me and that did hurt at the <laughs> because <laughs> i know they were sitting there just watching me go for all of those activations um that did hurt but hey it's an option definitely consider running that in your deck um also outside of the sacrifice element for yukima um you can definitely run some variation of this you know reconnaissance mission coastal piracy biden of thassa these are all going to give you that draw on damage whether you're just using it strictly for yukima or you're going wide with a bunch of unblockable creatures um, running some kind of package of this is really going to help you make sure that card draw stays consistent and also stuff like nature's will and hadana's climb um, nature's will you know you're gonna have a creature that is unblockable so when it deals combat damage to a player you get to untap all of your lands um hadana's climb that's going to allow you to get those extra counters going and then once it flips it's really going to help you kind of push your voltron but um, outside of that that's going to be a lot of the core cards that you're going to be running in a lot of your basically partner decks with these two partners let's go and talk about some of the creature packages that you can run um, one of the things that you do want to kind of think about when you're building this deck is kind of running so you have commander a commander b we have yukima and then we have um and then we have Sazor. So what you want to do is you want to have Commander C for the deck. You want to have a Commander D for the deck. You want to be able to get these creatures down that have an immediate board state or immediate board presence that really kind of help you push yourself into that late game. Right hand and Voral, you can certainly kind of have this be the silent commanders for the deck. Um, you have a commander that cares about counters getting on creatures. You have unblockable creatures, so you can double the counters on that unblockable creature. Whatever that is, you want to incorporate some sort of kind of sleeper commanders for the deck. Um, also, you know, if you're going to be going with a plus one plus one counter deck i've built cadell and rayhan I love that. It's a lot of fun to play Soul Tie Counters. You've got Unspeakable Symbol. Um, you've got Winding Constrictor. You've got Bio Shift. You've got Plaxcaster Frogling for protection. You've got Corpse Jack Menace to kind of amplify those counters. Um, Fathom Mage is going to give you some really good card draw. And then also stuff like Retreat, you know, making your land drops, getting those counters on your creatures, or even something like Bread for the Hunt. Um, if you're going to take this deck into kind of a Soul Tie Counters deck, I highly recommend it. It is a lot of fun, and it is... 
a prime example of what I talked about at the beginning of the video of that is definitely about the road to the win than it is more actually winning itself. Because if you go for soul tie counters, um, it just gets out of hand really quick and you're just kind of like, okay, it's doubled from this. What's the math? Let me get my calculator. Um, highly recommend it. Definitely go for this. Soul tie counters is probably where I'm going to take this deck uh, just because it is so much fun. Um, outside of the soul tie counter packages you can run, you can also go kind of go for this unblockable. We saw Coastal Piracy earlier. Um, there's a lot of one drops that give you unblockable uh, lurker tormented soul slither blade these are all great options for your sword of blank and blank let's say that we get yukima down something happens to it and then we just stick sword of feast and famine on slither blade and start swinging in i'm um, getting those untapped triggers there's also a ton of two drops that give you some sort of kind of looting effect invisible stalker is going to be a wonderful kind of voltron backup piece for you um, blighted agent is going to be that nice infect that you can do to start swinging in and then looter like i mentioned that's going to give you that looting effect swinging in um, there's a lot of the one drops and two drops out there with these videos i'm just trying to basically say hey these are starting points if this sounds like your play style branch out from here so there's definitely a lot more out there i'm just for the sake of brevity um this is what i'm talking about and of course you get to the three drops you've got true name nemesis which is going to get protection from your opponent um Thada, which is going to allow you to get some of your soul rings your mana crypts whatever you want from your opponents and even kind of running this ninjutsu you know these unblockable creatures uh, it wouldn't hurt to kind of toss in a couple different ninjutsu creatures in there um just to kind of take advantage of that ability or just kind of keep your opponent on their toes um outside of the unblockable package that you can run in there it wouldn't hurt to kind of run this like kind of sleeper edric deck you know once you deal that combat damage have something happen that's going to be cold eye that's going to be trigon predator um having edric on the battlefield whenever one of your creatures deal so you can see where i'm talking about the beginning of the video in that you're building this kind of ecosystem of soul tie value cards and you don't really know how it's going to play out until you start playing it then you can start making tweaks from there so uh, what i would suggest is if one of these creature packages does kind of stick out to you i would stick with one and then slowly start incorporating it in there um, other ideas because if you have just a bunch of different little packages in there you're good at a bunch of different little things and you're not good at one thing and that's definitely something you want to keep in mind but yeah running some of these combat damage spells you know trigon being able to deal with your opponent's board state you also got some fun options like a root water thief which is going to allow you to steal stuff out of your opponent's library or exile it and then constable is going to send a bunch of stuff back so if you can somehow make constable unblockable get a lot of stuff on there um, that's going to be a bad day for your opponent once you deal combat damage with that creature and of course black black is going to give you some very awesome combat damage triggers um you have dream stealer they're going to discard that many cards rankle is going to keep you open on either discarding a card or making them uh, sacrifice a creature same thing with mind eater um you're going to get this nice gaunty effect with mind eater once they deal that damage and then you can play cards exile with mind eater um also you know different <laughs> not necessarily discard cards but demir cut purse is going to make them discard a card and then you've got spawn writhe which i actually love uh, trample whenever it deals combat damage to a player put a token that's a copy of it on the battlefield so um even if you don't want to go super combat damage heavy with these discard effects there's fun stuff like spawn which makes copies of it as you keep swinging in so if you can somehow make your creatures unblockable hey there you go let's have some fun um outside of the counter creature package outside of the different kind of deal combat damage creatures you can also just kind of build this soul tie aggro deck or this soul tie mid range you've got a ton of three drops that you can flash in uh brazen borrow nimble and the vendillion click these are all going to give you different options that you can flash in at your opponent's instep and then have these threats on the the battlefield um, same thing with night veil vale specter and thief of sanity um, you just get these creatures on the battlefield that your opponent need to deal with if they don't then they're going to be your next voltron piece or you're going to start swinging at their planeswalker and one of the things soul time wants to do is just get a lot of little threats out there exhaust your opponent on resources and then hopefully close the game out which is kind of this overwhelming value and stuff like night veil vale specter and thief of sanity just getting that nice incremental card stealing uh, it's really going to help push your game plan and have a lot of fun and of course you're in Golgari, um, Skullbriar, the brand new Bane of Monster that got released, Grim Flayer. Just having these mid-range threats that come out, they need to be dealt with right then and there. That's going to give you, that's basically going to take the heat off your partner commander. So, and of course, Virtus and, and Gorm, I, I don't know. I, just, I haven't built them yet, but having them in a deck like this that cares about swinging and attacking. And I, I just love thinking about all these creatures hanging out together and be like, yeah, let's get some good stuff going. And of course, just kind of your mid-range option. you got Shadow Mage, Infiltrator, Questing Beast, Notion Thief. You've got Baleful Strix, Ice Fang. It's totally up to you whatever sort of package you want to run. There's just a ton of value in these creatures. And uh, I don't know, it's just... You could build like three or four different versions of this deck if you really broke it down. Now, 
that's going to be the creature package just going going on to combo corner and that's going to be different ways that you can combo off of this deck um one of the ways that you can is going to be naru and uh, ghostly flicker and you keep on the battlefield so once you have seven mana um you go for ghostly flicker you cast Naru, um, that's going to copy Ghostly Flicker once it enters the battlefield. Then you can use it to basically just keep bouncing that. So Naru is going to enter the battlefield, you make a copy of Ghostly Flicker. You're going to have all these just, you know, if they can stop it somehow with some spot removal, that'll definitely disrupt the combo. But basically, if nobody has any answers, you're going to be able to keep bouncing these creatures indefinitely and dealing that damage to target player, and you're going to be gaining that life. Um, one of the other ways that you can kind of combo off in the same way is going to be a Lurin. Believe it or not, um, you can play spells with three or less for free. That's going to be Cavern Harpy and Yukima. Um, these are going to allow you to basically just, you know, you cast Yukima, cast Cavern for free, uh, return it, Yukima back to your hand, then just basically just keep casting it. You know, if they've got counter magic, they've got counter magic. But having these kind of backdoor combos in a deck like this, especially like I mentioned, Salt Ties kind of not all over the place, but it just doesn't necessarily lack that late game punch sometimes. Um, running a few of these combos in here are going to be low investment and give you some sort of game plan to fall back on. Like I said, that uh, break glass in case of emergency, it's always nice to have some sort of combo in your deck. But that is going to be it for the video. Um, this deck tech is wide open. You know, you can take this these two partners in any sort of direction that you want to go for. So if you have any cool ideas, hop in the comments. People like to watch these videos as starting points uh, for building their decks. But that is going to be it for the video. And if you enjoyed it, hey, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.